So the idea today is to talk about some frequently asked questions, some FAQ, and get to you right now. I'm going to try to answer two questions today. So number one is, the first question is, what perception do Japanese have of Americans and American culture? And the second one is, if someone, if you were coming to Japan in a week and you only had one day to spend in Japan, probably in Tokyo, what would I recommend you do? Well, the first question is, is perception. You to get caught up in what people think of you, what people think of your culture. And, and the longer I've been here, the more I've realized that the culture side is something that we need to just get over. And we need to get past that and see people um, obviously for just for who they are and not worry about the cultural differences. Of course, the cultural base on, upon which everyone has grown up on plays a major role in shaping that person. But at the end of the day, you're still, you're not dealing with the culture when you talk to someone, you're dealing with a single person. And I think that that, first of all, is the biggest realization that we can make when we come to, when we come to Japan as an American. So people may be worried about what kind of image America has in Japan, but I encourage you, when you come to Japan, to put that behind you and just think about who you are, what kind of, per, I don't know, what kind of background do you bring and how can you share that with, with that person that you're meeting in Japan. You're not sharing it with a culture, you're sharing it with a single person or, or just a couple of people in a, maybe in an intimate setting. And the perception that they have of you may, in turn, kind of change their perception on the U.S but it's important to just take it one person at a time, one word at a time, and really internalize what your uh, friend is saying and, and the kind of image that you are bringing from your hometown rather than from the U.S. So it's, I love these. these shit. Um, I have felt on multiple occasions is the drive to work as a team here in Japan is really, really strong. Whereas in the U.S., it's not only natural to uh, go off on your own, to explore on your own, but to succeed on your, on your own, it's encouraged. And, and many people don't think anything of it because it's just, everyone does it. So here, for example, even at work, sometimes I'll get involved in something and I'll start moving forward on my own. And I... I forget that it's, it's very much uh, each, each and every step of the way you are consulting, you are double checking with your teammates, with people that are outside of the team that may have a, an opinion on the matter. You're always checking with, with people that are, that in some way may have contact with that project and are reflected in the results of that project. And so you constantly check, 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 check where maybe in a smaller company, especially in the U.S., would be, would be really fast moving and you maybe check with one or two people, but in the end of the day they say, I want you to uh, take control of this. I want you to you know, show me your results. And then you, you do it, and then you come back, and then you get a review and you try to improve on what you did. Whereas in Japan, it's, it's a slow, like every single step of the way is how are you doing this? This is what I did. And this changed this. Okay, I changed it. Uh, what should I do next? Something like this. Okay, I did that. Here it is. What do you think? Uh, change this. Okay, I changed it. What's the next step? And so it feels like it takes a lot longer. But at the end of the day, everyone's okay with the progress that's being made. And that can, that can be a really good thing because you've checked and double checked every angle. It can also be a bad thing because it takes so much time. And in, in an industry where maybe innovation is key, uh, you could get left in the dust. So that's maybe one perception that I have of Japan and maybe Japanese have of, of Americans is that they, they don't work as a team very well or they're much more um, individualistic, which I think on a cultural side, it's true. 
So the next question is, you're coming to Japan in one week and you only have a single day to spend it here. And switch. Probably like 80, mid 80, something like that. Still pretty bright. What would you do if you only had one day in Japan? And say it was next week, so I'm talking to you, and you say to me, say, we're coming to Japan to visit in a week, what should we do? We only have one day, we're gonna be in Tokyo. At, at which point I would just be like, whoa! Uh, Cause that's not much time, you should have told me earlier. <laughs> so in that day, that means that you're arriving in the airport, and you're driving, you're driving and taking a train from the airport to your hotel and then you have to get from your hotel back to the airport and then you also have to sleep. So you've already lost, I don't know, seven, eight, nine, ten hours, blah, blah, blah. So you say we only have like 14 hours in the city. What should you do in those 14 hours or so? So you're gonna let me know what food you wanna eat. Because the most important thing is getting the food and not thinking about the food. We don't want to think about where we're going to get our food. We don't want to think about what we want to eat. You don't want to like decide should it be this restaurant or that restaurant, looking things up on Yelp, blah, blah, blah. We want to have the restaurants we're going to go to all set to go by the time you get here. So that we just, we have reservations even, everything's done and set before you even arrive. Let me know what you want to eat and we will find that first. I'll actually look that up for you and I'll pick out some great spots that we can go to. So one restaurant that I've been thinking about going to is this restaurant in Akasaka called, uh, what was it, Ninja something? Ninja something? Uh, yeah. But I kind of want to check that out with you when you come here. The other place that I want to check out is this sushi place in Omotesando, near Harajuku. It's, it's great, top class sushi, and it's, the price is good, and yeah, so we got to go when you come by. The second thing that you got to do is let me know what you want to see. So do you want to go like to attractions? Do you want to go to museums? Do you want to just see what people are doing on a day-to-day? -day? That kind of, you know, filters things down a bit. And while you're doing that, keep in mind that we only have 14 hours and you have to factor in just getting, sitting down and eating. So that's probably minus two or three hours. And then just getting here and there is minus another two or three hours. So we're down to like nine, eight, seven hours left to do stuff, which means I would pick out top maybe three things that you definitely want to do. So for example, like say you want to go see a place, you want to go to Harajuku. We'll go check out Harajuku. And then while we're there, we can go right next door to Motesando and maybe get some lunch. After that, you say, well, I would also like to see Skytree, which is a super tall, like needle-like, think Space Needle and times three, like it's super, super tall. And that's another hour or two. And last but not least, you say, well, I want to check out this, these museums. And well, as luck would have it, in Ueno, not too far from Skytree, there are a lot of museums, there's great parks, and you could easily pass three or four hours there just looking at all this stuff. So with that, you've already had, had your day and you've Basically, we picked out two to three spots to eat. Maybe you ate in the hotel, and we've gone to a museum, Sky Tree, and we checked out Harajuku and Omodesando. Got some great sushi, and you're ready to go back to your hotel to sleep and get on your flight the next day. Yeah. Anyway, so that kind of rounds things up. If you have any questions at all about what to do in Japan and in Tokyo, I probably am not the best person to ask, but I will definitely try my best to point you in the right direction of someone who can. So, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please like this video by pressing the like button. And if you like the content, please subscribe because that tells me that uh, you want to hear more and I. Yeah, just by letting me know that, by subscribers increasing, motivates me to bring some more content to you, some more advice to you uh, more often. So let me know and I'll let you know. See ya.